Hello everybody. In this video I'm going to go over some of the ways that I keep the ball right of the one pin when the ball is reacting too much. What are some of the tricks that I've learned over a period of time that right now they might seem common sense but I tell you that after <laughs> so many years or two I kind of I just I don't know. It took me a while to figure this out. So let me get started here. Let's say that your ball is going too slow. Now, what we want to do essentially here is match the ball speed with the rev rate on the ball. So let me do an example of something that I see when people try two-handed bowling, right? They're not very confident in themselves. They're trying not to trip over their feet. They're just getting started, which is okay. Everybody's got to learn. So let's say you throw, you stand right here, right, at this purple line, right? And you start here, uh, well, let's say in my video I said we started more like around right here. And I know this isn't drawn to scale, but you walk up here to the, the foul line, which is this red line here. And you throw your ball, and it goes this way. And your ball's going super slow, but it's hooking a lot because you're a two-hander now. And then what happens? It hooks before it gets to the one pin which is right here like I said I know this isn't drawn to scale but I'm just trying to show you okay so what's one of the ways that we can raise the ball speed right one of the ways that we could do this is with tempo of the feet so maybe instead of walking so slow maybe we can walk a little faster we walk a little bit faster the ball is still gonna have something similar to this rev rate here but what's going to happen is that the ball is going to be traveling faster and so essentially it's not going to have as much time to hook so now we have something going like this and now you might barely make it and go brooklyn or maybe you'll even strike right here right well that's by uh, increasing the rate of how quickly your feet are stepping in front of each other which your feet should be going at an even tempo. If they're going faster, they still need to be going one, two, three, four, five. Or if you have a six step approach, one, two, three, four, five, six. That was one of the things that Norm Duke and Rhino Page talked about when they came to San Antonio at the University Bowl. They told me doing wrong, uh, that I was doing wrong was I would go one, two, one, two, three which they said is it's terribly hard to be consistent with that you need to have an even tempo try and match one two three four five but i'll go over that in a different video so you could speed up the rate at which your feet step in front of each other one thing that i do to raise my ball speed is i start further back so let's say that you start right here normally right along this line whether you start over here or over here doesn't matter um, but let's say you start right here well one of the things you could do is move back to where this purple line is and that will basically make your steps bigger and basically it'll give you more time to build up momentum from the time that you start here to the time you get up here you'll be going a little bit faster than if you start here and get up to right here it's one of the reasons that Bruce Lee's punch is so amazing, his one-inch punch, right? Because how could something accelerate from here to here? How can it accelerate so quickly and get up to a certain speed in such a short period of time? It's the same concept. When you give yourself more space, you have more time to accelerate by the time you get up here, and you'll be moving faster by the time you get up here. And one disadvantage of that is that if you're moving too fast, then you might affect the release of your ball so you might throw the ball kind of uh <laughs> with bad technique but you could start further back so we can start here or maybe if that's still not getting the ball enough time to get down the lane and end up right here if it's still going too slow we can move even further back to like right here and move further back until you run out of space but if you're taking these really big lunging type of long strides it's gonna hurt your game so you can only move back so much right that's where the type of ball that you're throwing comes into play and I talked about in one of my videos how I like to use the house ball I like to use the 
plastic ball on a house shot. Now, let's say your ball's hooking like crazy. It's doing this, right? Now, I think rarely ever will you have trouble keeping the ball right of the one pin if you're using a plastic ball. And that's why I like to start with the plastic ball. When I go to practice, I'll throw the plastic ball. And let's say my plastic ball does this little number right here. It goes like this and it just kind of, it ends up over here near the seven pin or maybe over here near the six pin, right? Well, that's for you right handers. <laughs> so let's say the ball is not hooking too much, right? That means that there's oil and I figured that out during practice, right? If, if it's not hooking a lot by the time it gets down here, then I'm either going to have to slow my ball speed down by moving up a little bit or changing the tempo on my feet to walk slower. But when you walk really slow, one of the things that suffers is your accuracy. So when you start a little bit further back, I tend to see that the ball ends up in a smaller space. So if you start up, if you start up here and you throw the ball and let's let's just look up here right and let's pretend that when you start up here your ball is hitting somewhere between right here and right here by the time it gets down the lane right one of the things that I've noticed is that if I start further back it tends to make my ball have a smaller a smaller space which I think is more accurate and more precise I don't know which term it is but now my ball will start ending up in a smaller space and it's kind of like sighting in a rifle at the rifle range the more I move back generally I t tend to see the ball more accurate in a smaller space so now I might see if I move really far back I might see my ball end up between here and here which is what I want that means that there's other factors at play and I pretty much found where I need to be standing and the right ball because if your ball is ending up between the one and the three pin pretty accurately, that means that it might be a release or other factors that are messing with your game. So keep in mind, you can move forward or move back, but if you move forward, you might start to see your ball end up between the one pin here and maybe the six pin over here and that is not very accurate as you know so you could change how far you move back and forward you could change the plastic ball versus the reactive ball so let's say you you're in practice and your ball ends up over here it didn't hook anywhere near enough well you could if it's a house shot you could throw more along the outside here and that will make the ball come in sooner because it'll be along the dry part of the lane and your ball will hit the dry part of the lane and hook at the end but let's say that that approach isn't working for you. You're not striking well in practice, right? And you only have a short period of time to decide what ball you're going to be throwing for your first ball of the games, one, game one in league. So what you want to do, if you can, if you decided that the plastic ball is not working for you, you want to try and throw another ball like a reactive. And the reactive ball, what you could do is instead of throwing it out here, between the gutter and the second arrow, what you could do is throw your reactive ball between two and three arrow. So it'll be more on the inside, and we're assuming there's a house pattern as well. And this ball is going to go more on the inside where there's more oil, and it's going to have a higher chance of striking if it stays in this oil, versus if it goes out here, what it may do if you throw it this way is it'll hook at the last second and it'll make for a very hard time being uh, precise. It might go like this and it might go, ah. Well, you might have a high reward and high risk scenario there where your ball that is reactive might be giving you a lot of strikes, but it also might be leaving you a lot of ugly leaves like the 4-6, which is like this, or the 7-10 or the Greek church, right? We don't, we don't like those. So we don't want to leave pins like that. So what you want to do, if, if you want to try one more thing, you think you found the ball that's worked for you, one more thing that you could try to increase the speed of your ball, if you think you're real close to finding the correct speed to match with your rev rate, 
right? Because we're not even talking about releases here. We're assuming you have the same release because you're just getting started. You don't know different releases. And one of the things that you could do too is you have the same tempo with your feet, right? These are my feet. One, two, three, four, five, right? Not that fast, but one, two, three, four, five. Well, one of the things that you could do is with your feet, your four, first four steps, assuming a five-step approach is you go one, two, three, four, and then on your fifth step, you push off and you slide, right? You can make your slide a bit of a power slide. So the harder you slide, that should increase the accuracy of your ball and cluster where your ball hits at the end closer together. Whereas, like I said, if you start further back, you'll end up with this. But if you have a smaller slide, your accuracy will be affected if your slide is too small. There's a certain slide that the best bowlers in the PVA have, a certain length, right? And that slide affects accuracy greatly. So you could try and make your last push off very strong. And that strong slide should give your ball the speed that you need to get up here between the one and the three pin. All right, so I hope I answered some of your questions that you might have, and I thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Comment, like, subscribe. Thank you to my sixth subscriber, and have a great day.